to be respectful of everybody's time. Uh, my name is Catherine Helland. I'm a speech language pathologist and I've worked in a bunch of different settings, but right now I'm with Tech Owl PA, which is a sister program to you folks in New Jersey. And I uh, was invited by Mike and Naomi to present today. At first, we were going to talk about uh, some AAC evaluation processes and the set, set framework. And uh, we sort of changed tracks when we realized that there was such a need for resources and everybody's facing this distance learning as a new way of interfacing with students and teachers and kids. Um, so we thought we would talk about supporting AAC users in the time of uh, COVID-19. Um, and I'm going to go through a bunch of slides pretty quickly, but again, I'm going to make sure that you have a way to access the information afterwards um, so that it doesn't just disappear in the flash of a uh, PowerPoint slide deck. And during the presentation today, if you want to ask a question, go right ahead and use the uh, chat function or raise your hand. Um, and I will hang out afterwards, certainly, especially for any questions that come up. Okay, so how do we go about supporting AAC users at this point in time when we're all self-isolating uh, and in our homes and trying to figure out how to use all the different technologies that are available to us? Well, I wanted to take today to try and provide a bit of a toolbox that would hopefully give you some resources to start off with. Uh, so that uh, you have some place to at least begin your exploration and in 30 minutes There's no way to give a comprehensive list of course of all the Resources that are out there to support families students and therapists at this point in time But please do feel free to email me afterwards. I will send you the PDF of the slide deck if you want to and uh, again, I will uh, provide the link to the post on our website, aaccommunity.net. As soon as that is live, um, I'll make sure that uh, you all get a copy of that. So, okay. First thing I wanted to talk about is just how to stay healthy. We're dealing with technology. Um, we're trying to make sure that we don't transmit the SARS-CoV virus between uh, therapists or students or family members. And we have uh, placed a resource on the techlpa.org website for cleaning electronic devices. And this resource is pulled from a bunch of different uh, manufacturer websites and uh, app websites that have deal with AAC users. And so it is a pretty comprehensive set of instructions for how to go about um, cleaning your devices to make sure that you're not spreading any kind of illness. And of course, as with everything else, it starts with wash your hands. Everybody, even before you pick the Clorox bleach wipe canister up to take a wipe out of the canister, you're gonna wanna wash your hands and uh, then take the wipe and then start cleaning your device. So here's the first resources to an article that we just posted a couple of days ago on how to uh, clean electronic devices and make sure that they're safe. And for a lot of AT Act programs, this is something that we're talking about and thinking about a lot uh, these days because um, one of the main functions of a number of, of a lot of us out there is to provide loaner devices uh, to people within our states uh, so that they can try technology, figure out what works, and uh, you know, try before they buy, as it were. And right now, a lot of us are suspended. I suspect all the ATF programs have suspended loaning and that we are waiting until we get some guidance and really feel secure about the procedures that we use for cleaning and making sure that our devices are safe to send from one location to another. Um, another piece of advice beyond cleaning your device, since we're all so siloed and separated from each other right now, would be to please make sure that you have a way to back up your system 
especially in a time when you can't see your uh, AT consultant or your speech language pathologist in person to fix something that's glitching with your device, let's make sure that everything is backed up. And depending upon the device, some of the dedicated communication devices can back up to flash drives and you might be able to do that right on site. Um, most of the iPad apps uh, and AAC devices that are iPad based will back up to the cloud. So depending upon the app or device, you may be backing up to a Dropbox folder, you might be backing up to an iShare account, or to some other kind, or maybe even uh, to Google Drive. So there are ways to back all of these devices up, and if we do that, then we can make sure if something breaks or glitches, or gets dropped at a time when it's not easy to get it repaired, or to send it out to somebody to fix it, uh, you haven't lost all your customization and all your hard work. So let's make sure that we back up our devices and also check in with your school SLP or your private therapist and see if they already have a backup file. Maybe they have one in Dropbox from all the work that they did and uh, maybe they can share that to a Dropbox folder that you can download. So back it up first and foremost. And still in supporting people in the time of COVID-19, we want to make sure we have light tech systems available as well. There are lots of places to get printables for the major AAC devices and apps, both dedicated and iPad based. So um, there's a link here to an AAC community article where we listed a bunch of those resources. And this is good for a couple of different reasons or purposes. One, if your tech breaks, you still have a familiar system available to your AAC user so that we haven't totally disrupted their knowledge of their icons or symbol set, their motor planning for accessing that communication and any customization which you have done. So um, create yourself a backup and if you don't uh, have the ability to, let's say, screenshot, uh, well, pretty much everybody should have the ability to screenshot their device, especially if it's iPad based. Uh, what you can do with an older iPad is you take the off button at the top of the device and the home button at the bottom and simultaneously click them and it takes a picture of each screen. And then you can save that to your camera roll and print them out. But a lot of companies do have some basic backup systems that are available for free to print. And what we recommend is that you take them out, mount the pages on some kind of light cardboard or oak tag, and then ideally laminate. But there are lots of other solutions beyond lamination. So you can put something into one of those pocket protectors that you see for binders, or you can use clear packing tape, or you can also uh, use clear contact paper, which hopefully that is not totally sold out in the stores at this point in time. Also, as an AAC family, consider creating an AAC go bag. So we're in an emergency situation that is perhaps a little bit different than a Hurricane Maria or a typical or not so typical environmental disaster. Uh, but still, we're in a situation where some of our vulnerable folks who use AAC may become ill and have to seek medical attention urgently. So it's still worthwhile to have a go bag, which is gonna include that flash drive with a backup of your vocabulary set, a light text system, copies of any of your scripts, and maybe, maybe even a power bank to make sure that a device can stay charged when uh, you're receiving medical care. Now at TechAL, we've put together a COVID-19 communication board. This is a two-sided board. It's available for free. If you're in Pennsylvania, you can also order laminated copies from us. And uh, we used a symbol set uh, based on icons from the Noun Project, which I do subscribe to. And um, you can see that there's a bottom row, which is COVID-19 specific medical communication. On the back of this core board, 
is a QWERTY keyboard. So if you've got people who do have access to literacy skills and wish to spell out a name or spell out something that's not reflected on the board, they have access to communication by that means as well. This is one of a number of resources that are out there at this point in time. Feel free to access it on our website, but also uh, USAC uh, has their patientprovidercommunication.org. They've come out with a bunch of symbol-based communication boards for hospitalization. And I think a lot of the app manufacturers and device manufacturers have also set up core specific, uh, COVID-19 specific core boards, and you can go to their websites to download those. So again, this is something that you might add to that go bag to make sure you don't lose the ability to communicate because in an emergent situation, be it at a hospital or a doctor's office, they're probably not going to want to maintain access to a high-tech device on the spot in that emergency uh, while somebody's just initiating treatment. Now let's turn more towards thinking about uh, hopefully not getting into emergencies. We're all staying home to flatten the curve and hopefully keep this virus from impacting as many of our AAC users and people with vulnerable immune systems as possible. So what can we do when we're home to address education and um, access to learning for people who use AAC or have other types of disabilities, one of the things you can do is to establish a routine. So you might need to create a visual schedule for the new circumstances. And there are a bunch of different resources that you can use to do this. If you have an iPad and apps, um, you can get the FTVS visual schedule app. It's a really great app that can import both photos and symbols and videos, and you can create a visual schedule for your school day studying at home. And you could even include video task analyses of how to do different tasks. So that's one resource. Another amazing resource is lessonpix.com which is an online symbol set. It's got a very inexpensive subscription rate. It's about 36 a year. And they have templates. So you can grab the symbols that you want, import photos. You can even uh, customize those symbols to represent somebody's background or uh, skin color or ethnicity. And you can then put those symbols into a template for a visual schedule or for some other type of learning resource. So it's a very flexible learning resource for a lot of our visual learners in the home environment. I also found online uh, that a website, A Day in Our Shoes, has access to a bunch of free visual schedule resources. So I wanted to include that here so that uh, you can check that out and see what might work for you. So we try to set up a schedule. Some of our other uh, students or older students perhaps may need a bit more guidance in terms of how much time to spend on a particular task and how to divide their time to participate in the study. So you've got a bunch of apps out there that can be used for time organization. And uh, two of my favorites are 360 Thinking, which is the picture that you see right here, and also 3030. And they're great for subdividing periods of time into discrete amounts of time and helping somebody with an executive dysfunction to take a look at how they're allocating their time to different tasks and maybe give them those visual cues to be able to move from one task onto the next task. Uh, since transitions are something we definitely, I'm anticipating students are going to have more difficulty with uh, because of the new environment that they're uh, conducting their learning in. The article on AAC Community also has some other apps and resources for things like mind mapping that can be used to help a student to organize their thoughts for producing uh, content for, let's say, a writing project or a writing prompt. So take a look at that. 
The AAC Language Lab is another research, which is a lot of companies out there are really stepping up to the plate and making sure that uh, people can access their materials without a paywall, at least for a period of time. So the AAC Language Lab has a free two month uh, subscription and the link is here on the slide and they have lesson plans, activities and resources for our AAC learners. So that's another resource. Hey, while it's free, hop on board, take a look, and grab the activities that can benefit your learner. Literacy is something that hopefully in school, all our AAC learners are targeting. It's something there's been a lot more attention to and a lot more research on in recent years. And there are a couple of resources that I wanted to share with you. One is tarhillreader.org. If you just go straight to tarhillreader.org, you've got a series of books online that you can uh, set the voice you want to read the book out loud. You can change your background color. You can select different topics that might be of, you, of interest to your AAC user. Uh, but now they have something new. This is pretty brand new as of, I think, January. They've add shared tarhillreader.org, shared.tarhillreader.org. And this has uh, resources on there for uh, Project Core for 36 uh, core vocabulary symbols on the screen, as well as some tips and hints for how to comment and how to engage uh, your AAC users uh, without being too prompt heavy and without um, just interjecting verbal comments like, good job, you're doing just great. Let's be more functional with the language that we use in engaging with AAC learners. I see there's a question in the chat. Yes, uh, uh, Jennifer says it's super, super cool. I've used it a few times. I really, really love it. Uh, Karen Erickson and uh, the team at UNC have also come out with a new literacy book uh, targeting people with severe disabilities. And now as of this morning, I saw that Jane Farrell, an uh, amazing resource out of Australia, has a new website uh, called Comprehensive Literacy for All. So let's all explore that website and find out what kind of resources she is layering on top of the other stuff that we already have to help uh, just keep targeting those literacy skills for our AAC users. Let's again presume that everybody is going to gain literacy skills and when somebody truly knows how to read and to write, then they're truly going to have access to communicating about anything that they want to be able to communicate about. Uh, other free educational websites that are out there. And yes, I know I just touched my face. Eek! I'm trying to be very conscious of that these days. Uh, LearnInColor.com has links to a whole bunch of different free websites for targeting different topics such as math learning and social studies, science, other types of things such as what you might find on PBS Kids or Brain Pop. Uh, so take a while to explore that. She's put up some new posts on the website in response to the situation with COVID-19. And then uh, one of my favorites is kizclub.com. K-I-Z-C-L-U-B.com. There are printables up there on a lot of different topics, including seasons and foods and health, but there are a ton of visual story props. And so it's a really great resource for um, finding some really motivating activities for our AAC users to engage in, in conjunction with a book. So take a look at the kids' books that are listed there and the printables that you can um, get for free. And they come either as coloring pages or as already pre-colored uh, pictures. So that's a really neat website. I used it a lot when I was in the schools and working with kids in that kind of setting. Uh, also, if we're looking to work on aided language stimulation and AAC modeling in the home environment, we want to make sure that we're giving our kids uh, lots of fun stuff to talk about. And there are a ton of webcams out there. And um, I played around a couple of weeks ago and found a bunch of these webcams and put some of them into a blog post. 
um, there's a panda cam at the zoo where you can just watch the pandas and what they're doing all day. There is an ISS, International Space Station cam. There's a stork nest cam. There is a website, it's very meta, um, that's in this post that has just webcams to all different types of locations. So do you have an AAC user who loves trains or who loves ships? or who loves other types of animals, you can probably find a webcam that's gonna give them a chance to look at live images of those animals or ships or trains and give them something to talk about, give you an opportunity to sort of go beyond the walls of your home and model AAC about some really fascinating um, uh, topics. And what I wanna do is get this working on my um, smart TV so that when I'm just sitting around, I can have the octopuses um, or the, uh, what other, uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium, I think has a great jellyfish cam. I'd love just to watch that, just to relax. There are also games out there for AAC users and Avaz, which is the company that manufactures, um, that makes the Avaz AAC app and has several other apps as well, has made available some AAC games to play at home. So, uh, you know, anything that's motivating can be an opportunity to work on language and to get people talking using AAC or to model AAC. So let's play games together. Let's take a break from the uh, you know, tasks that might feel like work for our AAC users and use something that's fun and motivating to try and get um, our AAC users to talk. So explore some games. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. There was a little chirping in the background. I live by a small lake, and if I seem at all distracted, it's because an osprey just flew past my window, so that was pretty cool. Um, I also wanna keep people up to date on the AAC sales that are going on right now, because um, uh, even though March has felt like it's taken a whole year, it's really only the end of March, and the only sale that I know of so far that is over is Touch Chat HD with Word Power. But if you're looking to get AAC into somebody's hands, a lot of the other AAC apps are going to be on sale for different dates and periods of time during the month of April. So take a look at that and take advantage of what's out there when it's 50% off. Also in terms of AAC apps that are cross-platform, so if you're stuck at home, I know in Philly a number of students got sort of stuck separated from their devices. Um, I don't think there's any great answer to this beyond having a low tech or light tech backup, which matches the customization of their device. But if you have a Kindle Fire at home, if you have something and you just, you see that frustration in your AAC user and you need to get something as a stopgap into their hands, um, CoughDrop is cross-platform and they have doubled their free trial period so that I think it's four months instead of two months. So that might be a stopgap measure if you can't print out a light tech system to get something going that your AAC user can communicate. Um, also, let's take advantage of video chats. I know that I am. We were very, very fortunate. My mom is in New York City. She's in Manhattan. She's in the epicenter of what's going on right now. And um, she has a lung disorder, so she cannot afford to get sick. So she has been in her Upper West Side apartment for about four weeks now. She started early with social isolation. And fortunately in January, we as a family had gotten her an iPhone as a present. Her old Android phone was dying and we just knew she needed something new and so we got that for her and we are now FaceTiming almost every single day and having family FaceTime chats on the weekends but you don't have to have an iPhone there are lots of resources out there for video chats so you've got apps that can be cross-platform like one of my favorites is Google Duo and Google Duo has a very very simple interface where if you have photos connected with the contacts in your contact list those photos show up in that interface so that all you have to do is press the photo of the person you're trying to call and you can have a video chat and if you video chat from let's say mom's 
Samsung phone or mom's iPhone, and then you have your AAC user there or from an iPad, uh, they can talk with people who are near and dear who they can't visit right now. So let's all keep everyone socially engaged and in touch, whether they be our vulnerable populations or our AAC users or anybody who feels isolated at this point in time. Other things that you can do uh, for the therapists who are out there who might be on this uh, uh, webinar, uh, there are lots of ways that you can uh, share your iPad screen to your computer so that you can take those wonderful apps that you used in therapy when you were in person and at least show them on the screen and engage with them with your uh, student uh, through distance learning. So if you're on an iPad and you also have a Mac or a MacBook Pro, you can do this through AirPlay. But if you're using Zoom, you can mirror your screen and their instructions at the bit.ly link on how to do that. But there are also a lot of other apps out there. And there were so many, and I didn't see enough ratings to really feel like I wanted to pick one or two just to share with you. But there are apps that allow you to mirror your screen from an iPad to a Windows computer. So it's still a possibility for you, even if you don't have that Apple to Apple connection. And uh, we've reached kind of the end of this. I, I think we've got three minutes left. I wanted to leave some time for questions, if possible. You can see here a slide, uh, the obligatory slide about TechGals programs and services. And again, a lot of stuff that we're doing, like the lending library and our reused equipment is suspended because of the risk of transmission of SARS-CoV-2. But one of the things that we are trying to highlight and get up and running are device demonstrations, especially app-based. Whoops, didn't mean to leave that quite yet. And what we're doing is we're starting to do Zoom-based uh, demonstrations. So if you're somebody out there who's looking to compare AAC apps or looking to uh, compare apps for video magnification or whatever function you're looking to improve, we can set you up with a video demonstration, hook you up with the right professional in our office, and get you that information. So uh, we can do demonstrations even if we're not hands-on at this point in time. And aacommunity.net, again, is where you're going to find a lot of the resources that I've talked about today. I tried to sort of uh, gather them together under one roof, and that's going to be especially true once I finish posting the blog post this afternoon. And uh, if you wouldn't mind, we'd be very, very uh, grateful if you would go to this bit.ly and fill out our T1 form. Uh, as an AT Act program, we're always looking to show our funders that um, we are doing the work we're meant to do. And uh, especially right now, we're all challenged to be as effective as we can in uh, the current situation. So if you'd give us some feedback on today's presentation, I'd be very grateful to you. And uh, I would love to continue talking with everyone and answer any questions if you want to sh uh, shoot them into the chat window. I see from Allison, uh, will you be doing demonstrations as Zoom meetings like this? Um, the demonstrations don't tend to be like a presentation where we have a bunch of people on the call at one time. They tend to be more one-to-one -one or one-to-two. But what we've been doing so far is to um, send the person a link. So when they want to create a demonstration with us, we'll create a Zoom meeting just for the two or three of us and send that link to you so that you can participate. But email me and let me know if for some reason you can't access the Zoom platform, we will figure something out uh, that doesn't include Zoom, be it Google Hangouts or Google Duo or FaceTime, we'll find a way to do it. Awesome. Catherine, thank you so much. Everybody, we still have a minute or two. If anybody has a question, you want to drop in here real fast before you go. Uh, we have been recording, if you didn't notice the little blinking light at the top. And we will post this up uh, on our YouTube channel later today. And we'll also 
uh, share it with Catherine. They can pop it up on the Tech Owl also. So they'll have it in both places. Thank you. That'll be awesome. And Mike, what I'll do is as soon as I make that, that uh, AAC community post go live, I will share that link with you uh, so that you can share it with everybody who attended today. Perfect. Happy to do and that. that would be I'm great. hoping that's going to be a living document. And as people add their uh, resources to the comments on the blog post, we can put them into the post and share them and make sure they get out to everybody. Great. Awesome. All right, I see a lot of thank yous. Anybody, last call for questions or else we'll let you go back to, I'm, I'm imagining your next virtual meeting that you have to do. <laughs> well, I'm doing like five or six Zoom meetings a day. But so far, it's working really, really well. I'm very pleased with it. It is working well so far, I agree. I just have to remember uh, remember to kick the cat out. <laughs> then I'm good. When you walked away, I said the cat added some flavor to it. I thought that was fun. <laughs> Well, I didn't think everybody needed to hear her meowing at us for half an hour, yeah. so. <laughs> Last webinar I did, it was actually the dog who decided that she was going to have a fit of reverse sneezing. Oh, that's great. In the midst of my talking, so I'm sitting there talking and she's going snort, 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 <laughs> snort, snort. It adds to the fun. Uh, Jennifer asked, what was this training called? It's for the survey. What, what did we call this? Uh, let's see. I don't know. So we can call it just resources, going back to the beginning. <laughs> Supporting AAC users in the time of COVID-19. Okay, there you go. And then uh, Lori asked, uh, where will this show up on YouTube? Uh, the ATAC has a YouTube channel, and if you just search ATAC NJ, it will pop up there. And after Mike has shared it with all you folks, it will also then eventually go on to our YouTube channel, which our channel is Tech Owl PA. Awesome. Perfect. All right. I think we're good. Everybody, thanks so much for joining us today. All right. Thank Keep you for having me. We'll, we'll have some more webinars soon, and uh, we'll get those out to you. So thanks very much. Be all safe. right. Sounds good. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Wash your hands. Yep. Wash your hands for 20 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye.